students today we will start the first chapter of moments that is the lost child by mulk raj anand in this chapter we will see how a small child goes to a fair with his parents and what are his feelings over there when he is with his parents and what are his feelings when he is lost in the fair so let's begin our story the lost child a child goes to a fair with his parents he is happy and excited and wants the sweets and toys displayed there but his parents don't buy them for him why then does he refuse when someone else offer them to him this is a question asked by the poet sorry writer mulk raj anand he says when a child in a fair wants some sweets or toys which is denied by the, his parents but when the same thing is offered by some unknown person he denies that person so in this chapter we'll search the answer for this question so let's begin it was the festival of spring from the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity over here the narrator wants to say that it is a spring time and it the winter is at what to say it's going away the winter season is going away and the people are coming out from their houses happy to go somewhere like in a fair some walked some rode on horses others sat being carried in bamboo and bullock carts people are using various means to reach the fair some were walking some were riding horses or bullock carts and some were going on what to say bamboos one little boy ran between his father's legs brimming over with life and laughter over here we can see a small boy running here and there full of happiness for going in a fair come child come called his parents as he lagged behind fascinated by the toys in the shops that lined the way when they were in the way towards the fair the shops displayed toys which fascinated the child and he stops there he was called by his parents so as to go to the fair he hurried towards his parents his feet obedient to their call over here we can see that he was a obedient child when his parents called him he totally obeyed them his eyes still lingering on the receding toys but being a child his heart was there with the toys as he came to where they had stopped to wait for him he could not suppress the desire of his heart even though he well knew the old cold stare of refusal in their eyes he is a small child he likes toys like other children do he was not able to suppress his desire but he knew the refusal which he used to hear from his parents which again he was going to hear but he again decided to give a try that if if he can get the toys which he demands from his parents i want that toy he pleaded his father looked at him with red eyed in his familiar tyrant ways means this was the behavior of his father when he used means he over here the child used to ask for anything demand for anything from his father 
His mother melted by free spirit of the day was tender and giving him her finger to hold said, Look child, what is before you? Over here, the mother tries to control the situation and to divert the feelings of the child from the toy to other scenery view. So, he said the child that he could see here and there what all they are going to see. It was a flowering mustard field, pale like melting gold, as it swept across miles and miles of even land. The scenic view which the child was seeing was a mustard field which was flying and it was looking like a molded, what is a melted gold, gold all over, evenly spread all over. A group of dragonflies were bursting about on their gaudy purple wings, intercepting the flight of a lone black bee or butterfly in search of sweetness from the flowers. This is the scenic beauty seen by the child and the parents over there. The child followed them in the air with his gaze till one of them would still its wings and rest and he would try to catch it. The boy follows the dragon flies so that he can catch it. But it would got, go fluttering, flapping up into the air when he had almost caught it in his hands. Then his mother gave a cautionary call. Come child, come. Come on to the footpath. When he was running behind the butterflies, dragon butterflies to catch them, the mother called the child to come on the path as he was in the fields trying to catch the dragon butterflies. He ran towards the parents gaily and walked up priest of them for a while, being however soon left behind, attracted by the little insects and worms along the footpath that were teeming out from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine. Over here we can see the child was again left behind when he saw some insects which were coming out from below the earth to get the sunshine. Come child come, his parents called him from the shade of a groove where they had seated themselves on the edge of a wall. Again, the child was called by his parents who were resting in a groove near a well. He ran towards them. As a sour of young flowers fell upon the child as he entered the groove, and forgetting his parents, he began to gather the raining petals in his hands. As the boy entered the groove, suddenly there was a sour of flowers. He forgot the call of his parents and started gathering the petals of the flowers. But oh, he heard the cooing of doves and ran towards the parents, shouting, the dove, the dove. But as he was collecting the petals of the flowers, he heard some sound of what to say, to dove. He ran towards his parents, announcing that he had seen dove. The raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands. This line over here describes, as he sees a new thing, he forgets the past. When he saw the dove, the petals from his hands fell. Come child, come, they called to the child, who had now gone running in the wild capers around the banyan tree. And gathering him up, they took the narrow, winding footpath which led to the fair through the mustard field. The parents called their child, took up in their arms, and went on the footpath which led them to the fair. As they neared the village, the child could see many other footpaths full of throngs covering to the whirlpool of the fair. 
and felt at once repelled and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering. As they were nearing the village where he, they had to go, the child saw many footpaths were coming and meeting the same village point and he was totally fascinated to see this all. When he entered the fair, the first thing what he visualized, a sweet meat seller, always sweet meat seller is a person who set sweets. In Hindi we call them Mithaiwala. A sweet meat seller hogged gulab, gulab jamun, rasgulla, barfi, jalebi. At the corner of the entrance and a crowd pressed round his counter at the foot of an architecture of many colored sweets decorated with leaves of silver and gold. He can see a mithaiwala selling sweets which are gulab jamun, jalebis, rasgullas and many others. He had decorated them very beautifully with golden and silver leaves. The child stared open eyed and his mouth watered for the buffy that was his favorite sweet. Now as the child saw the sweets, he started demanding for burfi which was his favorite sweet. I want that burfi. He slowly murmured. He slowly started murmuring for the desire of burfi. But he half knew as he begged that his plea would not be heeded because his parents would say he was greedy. He pleaded with a half heart. He knew that what would be the answer of his parents. They would say that that he was very, very greedy. So without waiting for an answer, he moved on. So he never stopped to listen the answer from his parents because he already knew what his parents were going to reply. So he moved on. <clears throat> As he moved on, he saw a flower seller hugged Hogmis shouting for his selling items. A garland of Gulmohar, a garland of Gulmohar. The child seemed irresolutely drawn, means when he saw the flower seller selling garland of Gulmohar, he would not, he was not able to stop him from the attraction of the flowers. He went towards the basket where the flowers lay heaved and half marble. He again went to the flower seller and with a half hearted, he again murmured, I want that garland. But he well knew his parents would refuse to buy him those flowers because they would say that they were cheap. He also knew the answer that was to be given by his parents. The answer would be that the flowers were very, very cheap items. So without waiting for an answer, he moved on. So without waiting for the answer from his parents, he moved on. <clears throat> a man stood st holding a pole with yellow, red, green and purple balloons flying from it. When he moved forward, he saw a person holding a pole with yellow, means various colors of balloons. The child was simply carried away by the rainbow glory of the silken colors and was filled with an overwhelming desire to possess them all. When he saw the different colors of balloons, he was very, very desirous of getting that colorful balloons. But he well knew his parents would never buy him the balloons because they would say he was too old to play with such toys. Again he knew what would be the answer given by his parents that he was very very old for playing with balloons. So 
he worked on further means without waiting for any type of answer he moved on so let's stop till here we'll proceed further in our next video thank you